This video is about making linear models from information in a scatter plot. And there are some specific mathematical ways and formulas to accomplish this, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do a more informal summary line to create our linear model. Here's the data that we're going to use for our example. It comes from a small movie theater that noticed that during hotter days, more people came to see a movie, probably because of the air conditioning. So for the month of July, recorded the number of tickets sold along with the daily high temperature for that day and came up with this data. So each individual point represents the high temperature from that day and the number of movie tickets that were sold. And we do not have a linear model right now for a number of reasons, but number one is that we don't have this constant rate of change. We don't have all the points lining up into one nice straight line. They're sort of scattered about here. But there might be an overall kind of trend that it falls sort of along a straight line. So we might be able to use a linear model as a good approximation for all these different points or like an average of what's going on. So we see that possibly we might have an increasing trend that a straight line could be a good model for this more complicated scatter plot. If we have the actual data, we can put that into a calculator or a spreadsheet that will give us the equation of the very best summary line through all these points. But instead of going that route, we're going to take a more informal route where we just approximate on our own what might be a very good average or summary line through these points. I'm going to take a piece of raw spaghetti for my straight line and I'm trying to just move it around, adjust it a little bit, and figure out what kind of straight line would be the best overall average summary of what all these different points are doing. I don't really need to cross as many points as possible, just try to get right in the middle of what's going on. So I've got a few points above and a few points below my straight line, and this is going to be the linear model. Now you don't need to use spaghetti for this part, you could do it with a ruler, but I think it's easier for you to see, for me to show you what I'm thinking about with this average line. Now you will want to use some sort of ruler or straight edge as, as you're figuring out where your summary line is going to go. It's important that we draw a true straight line for our summary line through these different points in the scatter plot. Once you've figured out where you want your summary line, draw a straight line and make sure that your line goes all the way back to the vertical axis. So you can see where the vertical intercept is and keep that line nice and long through all of the points in the scatter plot. And this is the line that we're going to use to create the linear model from all the different points in the scatter plot. So to construct our linear equation, we need to think about two main quantities. We need the starting amount, which on a graph is going to be at our vertical intercept. So for my summary line, I've got a starting amount, a vertical intercept at 150 movie tickets sold. Now because I sort of informally chose this summary line, a different time or a, a different person might choose a line that's a little bit different from mine that would have a different vertical intercept and a different starting amount. And that would probably still be okay because there are a lot of different equations that would give a very good summary or average of the points in this scatter plot. So it's not critical that everybody finds the exact same line, just that we have a good to our eyes and mind, a line that is a good summary through all of our points. And, and my line this time happened to start at 150. So there's my starting amount, that vertical intercept. Next, the other quantity for a linear model would be this constant rate of change. And from a graph, that would be us looking for the slope. And our slope, we're looking for the vertical change, which is sort of the output change from our model, but on a graph, vertical change compared to the horizontal change. And we're not looking at any of these specific points from the original scatter plot. We are only focusing on the line that we have created. So it doesn't matter which points on the line we choose. I think it would be helpful to use some points where it seems like we have a good idea of what that point is. So this is 150 tickets sold 
when the temperature was 70 degrees. I can see that pretty clearly from the graph. So I want to find another place on my line where I think I could have a good idea about what was the temperature and what was the number of tickets sold. And I don't have to guess too much. So what about right here where I can tell I'm up to 200 tickets sold. And if I have to guess about what the temperature was, I'm going to go with 92. Now I don't have to be exact because our goal is not to be exact. If it, if it was, we would just do all of this with a spreadsheet or calculator. This is more just about main concepts and, and how we could work this out with the tools that we currently have. So we've got a vertical change from 150 tickets to 200 tickets, an increase of 50 tickets. And the horizontal change between these points is an increase from 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 92 degrees Fahrenheit, an increase of 22 degrees. This rate of change, an increase of 50 tickets over the 22 degree temperature increase, is about 2.27 tickets per degree. This represents the constant increase along our straight line. With each degree Fahrenheit that the temperature increases, the number of tickets increases by 2.27. So according to our linear model, with each degree that the temperature increases, another 2.27 movie tickets are sold. That's the overall trend or average that we have with this summary line from our scatter plot. And now we can create the linear equation that represents that line. We'll use the variable n to represent the number of movie tickets sold. And we have a starting amount from our vertical intercept. 150 tickets are sold. And there is an increase, a constant increase of 2.27 tickets per degree. So we would multiply that 2.27 by the number of degrees that it increases above 70. So our starting point here is already at 70 degrees. So we should note that D represents how many degrees above 70. Our 150 movie tickets are already when the temperature is at 70 degrees. So we only want to increase the number of movie tickets sold by 2.27 once we start climbing temperatures above 70 degrees. Now that we have this linear equation that models the number of tickets sold as the temperature increases, we can use this equation to answer a question like, how many tickets would you expect to be sold if the temperature reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit? A model that starts at 150 tickets sold and increases by 2.27 for each degree above 70. So if we're asking about a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we are 30 degrees above 70. So we'll multiply the 30 times 2.27. This equals 68.1. And then we're going to add it in to the 150. So the 68.1 is the total increase in number of tickets sold when the temperature has gone up by 30 degrees. And adding these together, we reach this number about 218 movie tickets sold if the temperature reaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit, according to the model from this summary line.